Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, please feel standing for the worship of the Mayor of Tamworth, Councillor Richard Kingstone. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, councillors. Please be seated. <coughs> Welcome, everyone, councillors and members of the public to Marmion House for our State of Tamworth debate. Before we get going, I just need to uh, clarify that tonight's meeting is being video recorded and the council's protocol required for regarding filming requires that no members of the public are deliberately filmed, hence you can see the location of the camera is as such. Um, and the agenda for this meeting provides further information for anyone concerned about being filmed, that includes councillors as well. I also draw your attention to the notices displayed in this room and available on the Council's website. So now we'll move on to the meeting. And I'd like to welcome all the members of the public present here tonight, including representatives from the Boys Brigade, who I can see on the front bench. Welcome to all of you here. I know you've got to leave in a little while. What quarter to eight is that? Quarter to eight. So when you do need to leave, just discreetly slip away through the members room and everything will be fine. We hope you enjoy tonight's meeting along with the rest of you. Okay, moving on to the agenda for tonight's meeting. First of all, we're going to deal with agenda item one, which is apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies? Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have four apologies for this evening. Uh, Councillor Steve Dyle is currently stuck in traffic around Birmingham Airport and is unlikely to make it. Uh, Councillor Marie Bailey is not feeling very well. Uh, Councillor Alex Farrell's train was cancelled. And Councillor Steve Pritchard is at a birthday celebration of his partner that was booked before he was elected at the by election. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Those are noted. Do we have any other apologies for absence this evening? No? Okay. Moving on to declarations of interest. Do we have any members who wish to declare an interest in the item being debated tonight? No? We will move on then to item three, to receive any announcements from the Mayor, Leader, members of the Cabinet or the Chief Executive. I just have the one, which is to remind you that next week's meeting, 17th of March, will be back in the Council House, because we, the Council Chamber in the Town Hall, because we now have heating that is working, and tea and coffee, and because we are due to, if you note on the agenda, because we are due to present a couple of certificates, There'll also be a buffet and drinks afterwards, so please uh, feel free to stay afterwards. Okay, item four, which is the State of Tamworth debate. And for this, I will hand over to the old oh, councillor people. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I just ask your clarification on a couple of things? Uh, will there be an opportunity for questions? This is the State of Tamworth debate, and in the past we haven't had questions. That's what I thought, Mr. Mayor, but others asked me and I wanted to be get it right. Um, and uh, secondly, Mr. Mayor, um, with regard to the declarations of interest, I think we've all assumed that whatever interests we have are, by definition, subsumed into wanting the best for Tamworth. So I assume that's okay. Absolutely. Thank you for that. <clears throat> okay, so with that, we'll move on to item four, the state of Tamworth debate. <laughs> And we'll hand over to Councillor Cook, the leader of the council. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And can I wait, uh, welcome fellow councillors and obviously members of the public to tonight's State of the Borough debate. Uh, the topic for the State of the Borough debate this year, Mr. Mayor, is Tamworth Town Centre, which is an important topic across the chamber and for the residents of our historic borough. Historically, the town centre as we've known it has been the beating heart of Tamworth, the centre of everything that goes on in Tamworth. But we're fully aware that as our personal habits change and how we live our lives change, so what the town centre represents and is has begun to change. We're aware there is roughly a 44% drop in footfall in our historic town centre. There are many factors from that, whether it's online shopping, people prefer to use Ventura, or many factors. It is what it is. We're fundamentally aware, Mr Mayor, that the Tamworth Town Centre needs to evolve 
into a 21st century offer. And our role as a council, as place shapers for our town, is to ensure that the offer of the town centre is the right one for Tamworth. This council cannot do it alone. We must do it in partnership with the county council, other government bodies, and certainly the businesses and the retailers of the town centre. Our town centre does have a historic market with that market charter, which is the historic base of Tamworth as a market town. And we must be very careful never to lose that quality of Tamworth. There are many things going on in and around the town centre, Mr Mayor, that are going to come to fruition over the coming years. And I hope this debate can inform some of those this evening. We're aware the council has purchased the old Gungate precinct, the, the site of the NCP car park, and we're looking long term to regenerate that site to give town, the town centre a boost, a real piece of regeneration that hopefully will start a domino effect across the town of more regeneration. We'll be aware that the previous owner bought the site in 2006 with the plan to build a retail shopping centre on the site. However, the 2008 banking collapse robbed them of their funding and it never came to fruition. Something, as Councillor Oates mentioned recently, actually meant that Tamworth dodged a bullet, that meant we didn't have another retail centre in the town centre causing more vacancy rates. We've obviously got the uh, High Street Fund that we've applied for at Government. Can I remind yourself and all members, please, Mr Mayor, that the details of the High Street Funding bid is confidential due to its commercial nature, and while we can mention it in passing this evening, we cannot go into details of that. Members will recall we dealt with that last week. But of course, it is good news for Tamworth should it come off. Members will also be aware that I fronted a campaign early last year through to the summer called Tamworth What's Next, where we actually went and consulted with residents, businesses, voluntary groups and many more on what they would like to see the town centre do long term and broader the town do more long term. Uh, all that information is in the papers that have been distributed as well as some other supporting <coughs> information about the town centre. And just from my own personal perspective as an introduction, Mr Mayor, I think it is important that we understand the town centre is changing and it is going to change. We cannot cling on to something that is changing beyond our control. Going back to those shopping habits as an example. But while we say that, it is important that we protect the retailers that are currently there and the businesses that are currently there and ensure they're in the right place to survive. We, we create the conditions for them to survive long term. We need to ensure we do not follow the mistakes of the past and we protect the beautiful heritage we've got in the town centre. And it's fabulous to see the assembly rooms open and function again, Mr Mayor. That we protect the castle, the town hall and some of our wonderful historic buildings to ensure it's there for future generations. And I know that's close to your heart, Mr Mayor. But we must turn it into a place of culture, not just retail. A place you visit for more than just shopping. It needs to become the beating heart of town with Mr Mayor. And that's why I felt it was an important issue for us to debate tonight in the set of the debate. I'm hoping for a positive debate, Mr Mayor, and I have got a couple of recommendations at the end, but I'll save those to see how the debate informs them. Happy to open the debate now, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Do we have anybody who wishes to start the debate this evening? <coughs> Councillor Norkey. Before you start, Councillor Norkey, I'll just remind everybody and members of the public that members get to speak for five minutes on the uh, topic of their choice with regards to the state of the border debate. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I totally agree with what uh, Councillor Cooks just said about the town centre and the regeneration of it and everything else we're looking forward to. But tonight is about the state of Tamworth debate, which is Tamworth on a wider scale. You know, we've got a six or seven mile, mile perimeter around, around Tamworth. We know we're not in a very big area, but I'm sure there's lots of councillors who are sitting in here tonight also probably want to talk about their own patch and what they consider their problems on the patch. Now, with respect, Mr Mayor, you know, we talk about a lot of things that are out of our control, which is obviously trees, roads, paths, that sort of thing, you know, which concern the everyday people. And I would like to see something done about that. Now, I'm sure that if we, as councillors, were to speak as one voice about that sort of problem, I'm sure that we could get something done. You know, it's it's a thought for consideration. There's lots of areas around Tamworth, 
and I'm going to say white here more straight away, that uh, needs to preserve it for the future of this town, for the future of the people of this town. They's, they's, they've got somewhere to go, somewhere to walk, somewhere to uh, see nature and the beauty of it. There's been a lot of work done down by uh, Warwick Gym or with the boardwalk that's been put in down there to help people go down there and enjoy that sort of thing. <coughs> you, you can get the wheelchair access down there. I was very proud not so long ago when dear mother was not too good to take her down there in the wheelchair that all round. So what I'm trying to say is, although I agree with you, Councillor Cook, wholeheartedly, the town centre needs regeneration, it needs bringing it into the real world, or well, use that word, there is other things around Tamworth in everybody's ward that needs to be looked at, that needs to be brought into the real world. We need to listen to what the people are saying out there. We need to act as a body all together about these problems that we all see. And you've all got them in your own wards. So if we were to talk about, we want them trees down, we want that, them paths doing, we want the roads doing, then a voice of all of us would be very, very strong. So once again, Mr. Mayor, I'll fully support what's been said to kick us off, but I just think that things are on a wider scale than that. And having lived here all my life and being a proud tummy, and probably walk down every street in Tamworth, barring the new bill at this moment in time, you know, I think I have a little bit of knowledge about what's gone on over the years. Thank you for listening, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Norkin. Who wishes to go next? Oh, thank you, Councillor People. I was about to go to the vote. <laughs> Over to you. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and can I first of all apologise? I've gone deaf in one ear, so if you need to speak to me, you might have to shout. Um, I agree with Councillor Norkey that the scope of this debate is too narrow. Tamworth is much more than just the town centre. And residents, my residents in Bowl Hall, are concerned about wider and arguably much more pressing issues, such as antisocial behaviour on Warwickshire Moor, um, overgrown, untidy vegetation, street trees, states of the roads, the street cleanliness, and of course, poor transport links, to name just a few. So I think it's a shame we've missed the opportunity to talk about some of those things. But if we turn to the town centre, I think we're all aware that a lot needs to be done. I'm really pleased to see that residents have been, been consulted, but I have to say, having spent most of my career in academia, I have got some concerns about the validity and reliability of the sample in the feedback that we've been given in the papers. I would have liked to have seen more information on the number of residents, their age, their ethnicity, their background, where in the town they come from, and so on. And I think that would have given the report a great deal more, more authority. If we're going to rely on uh, information in the report in future to inform our decisions about the town centre, I think we have to be a lot more confident about the reliability of the information that we've got. It may be that that information was gathered and hasn't been included in the papers, and if so, I'd be very interested to see it. However, the survey feedback uh, provided demonstrates what a lot of good sense our residents talk. To mention just a few good ideas that came through the feedback. First of all, cheaper parking, of course. Um, if you go to Grace Church in Sutton Coldfield, you can stay for two hours for £1.60. The cheapest parking in Ankerside is £2. Now, I know that members opposite are immediately going to leap up and say, but we don't control those. I agree, we don't. But we can work with partners and we can put subtle pressure on partners to ensure that um, parking is affordable. Um, but we could go further. I travel to Melton Mowbray once a week to look after my mum. Melton Mowbray is a market town like Tamworth. 
A big difference between Melton Mowbray and Tamworth is that the centre, the town centre, is not pedestrianised. In fact, you can drive through Melton Mowbray, you can park for an hour, and you can nip into the local shops. And that means that those independent retailers who, let's face it, across the country are really struggling, do at least have the opportunity of some passing trade. Now, we pedestrianised our town centre many years ago. It was just after we arrived in Tamworth. I think it was early 90s. Was it a good idea? Maybe let's be bold and brave and think about whether it would be sensible to de-pedestrianise it so that we do give our local businesses the opportunity to benefit from that passing trade. Links were mentioned between the town centre and Ventura Park. We've talked about that for years. Let's do something about it. We travel a lot on the continent. We've been to towns on the continent where they provide free shuttle buses for people to get from the out-of-town area, whether that's the car park or whether it's some out-of-town <coughs> shopping area, into the town centre. That might cost us some money. We might have to invest in that. But let's give it a go. If it doesn't work, then we'll have to try something else. More housing in the town centre. I said in a recent debate that town centres grew organically. Um, what was originally intended as housing was then developed into offices or shops. Now we don't have the need for those offices and shops. Let's turn it back into housing and let's not be shy about that. More housing in the town centre means more footfall for the fewer businesses, which is a win-win situation. So let's have a think about that one. Also mentioned in the feedback was the need for more community space. One minute. I haven't made any secret about the fact that I was very disappointed that the Philip Dix Centre displaced a lot of community groups when that was turned into the Enterprise Centre. I'm delighted that community groups around the town, for example, Moorgate Action Group, I'm going to give them a quick plug, they're here in the audience, who are trying very hard to preserve buildings for community use and to preserve those community action groups. We should do all we can to support them. So in conclusion, Mr Mayor, let's be bold, brave and visionary and use some of the capital money that, we're currently, that we currently have that's sitting doing nothing to enhance the town centre in really innovative ways. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Council people. Do we have anybody who wishes to go next? Councillor Bill, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I have to endorse what Ken, Councillor Ken Borgie has actually said. When I read uh, what this um, the state of the town of debate was about, I thought it was more about what the state of the town centre debate rather than the, than the actual town. I agree with him wholeheartedly. There are, there are councillors who want to talk about the whole of Tamworth, not just the centre. The centre, it, it's a gagging order. We're not allowed to say a lot about, about that because of what's going on. Same with Ken. I agree that we need to be doing something about it, and I recommend, or I'd say that I already say that the town centre, what you're planning at the moment, is, it looks good. But at the moment, what it hasn't got is people, the public, within it. All it's got is a controlling group and some consultants. And I'm concerned that when you actually build this new town centre, it's not the shops, it's not the offices, it's not the businesses. It's the people. If the people don't come, it doesn't work. So you need to engineer it around the people of this town. You need to be asking the people who are not coming into the centre why they're not coming into the centre. Not the people who are coming in, what they think about it. We need to see the people who are not using the, the town centre. So all I can say is, I, I came without, <laughs> without a script because I thought there wasn't a lot I could say because of this gagging order on the table. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Councillor Bill. Oh, bless. Do we have anybody else who wishes to go? <laughs> Councillor Stanton. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Like the others, after reading this, uh, this evening's report, I wondered whether uh, this meeting should have been renamed the State of Tamworth Town Centre debate rather than the State of Tamworth. Um, there's a number of points I want to raise, start with positive homelessness. The council's response to homelessness and support for the winter night schedule has helped to shelter and feed up to 10 people each night of this winter. 
And incidentally, it's opened its doors less than an hour ago, just a short distance from where we are now in St. John's Church, virtually next door. The council response has helped retain this service for the homeless and understand from my parish priest that over 200 people have volunteered during this year, many of them nothing to do with Tamworth churches, just people in this town wanting to help people less fortunate themselves. I, along with a number of my current and past Labour colleagues, are or have been volunteers, and I invite all members to consider volunteering as I do every year at this point. Um, you would make a positive difference, at least that's what I told myself at 5.30 this morning when I was leaving home to do the, the breakfast shift, um, along with Councillor Simon People. Fortunately for the guests, I was the one doing the cooking. <laughs> Town centre parking. Since I was re-elected onto the council in 2012, each year it has, been, it has asked the people of Tamworth what they want, and each year they have responded with more affordable or free town centre parking. It's about time as a council you stopped asking the people of Tamworth what they want if you have no intention of them responding to what they've asked for. A Labour-run Tamworth council will provide more affordable or free town centre car parking, initially by trailing free or nominally charged parking from 3pm on Fridays in at least one town centre car park. We listen to the people of Tamworth. The COVID-19 virus. I am amongst one of the groups of people most vulnerable to this virus as someone with lung condition. I'm married to a doctor and know how hard working our medical professionals are and I would ask members to keep them in our thoughts and prayers at this time. I hope the council will react sensitively and with understanding for any tenants or customers who find themselves unable to pay rent or other bills if they, are, they or their families are self-isolating, especially the more elderly members of our society. A heritage, we have a proud history in this town with our Anglo-Saxon links to the Kingdom of Mercia. This is not our only heritage. There's the Town Hall with its links to Thomas Guy and Robert Peel, which we could develop further. For example, the 27th of December 2024, less than four years away, will be the 300th anniversary of Thomas Guy's death. We should be preparing now to utilise this anniversary to highlight the Town Hall that he gifted to Tamworth. Additionally, I've always found it strange that a Conservative front Tamworth Council does not make better use of the fact that the birthplace of the modern Conservative Party could be linked back to the region of the Tamworth Manifesto by Robert Peel here in Tamworth. You know, furthermore, our, our, our heritage extends beyond the town centre. For example, in Wilnock, where I grew up, <coughs> and the honour to represent. There are the old Victorian board schools containing the handprints of the original school pupils who went there. This is irreplaceable if lost just like the, um, the old train station in the town centre. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. We need to protect these, these heritages. Open spaces. We need to invest in our open spaces and their development. I live near to the Wilnock section of the Kettlebrook Nature Reserve. I can be in an open space under trees within 30 seconds of leaving my front door. Along with other members of my family, I have periodically helped to volunteer in the local wildlife group helping to keep some of the paths used by members of the public, most, mostly school children, free from nettles and the like. There are a number of these groups in the town, and I'll ask members again to consider volunteering for these. In December, Mr Mayor, you may recall that you invited one of these groups to um, the town hall. Um, and if you're still interested in uh, moving the motion to get the uh, chief executive to wear uh, the historical wig, I am still willing to second that. Um, infrastructure. Our infrastructure on roads such as uh, are approaching capacity, if not already at peak times, and large developments within and on our borders must provide improvements to our infrastructure so as not to have a negative impact on the quality of life of the people in Tamworth already living here. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Stanton. Now, I'm going to say this, but consulting with our legal advisors and the Constitution, there is a rule in there that says that really if we're going to have a single issue debate and we have to discuss this and this does fall into in the interpretation of our advisors this is a single issue debate but we ought to bat backwards and forwards now i'm quite happy to to let things run at this moment in time if councillor people or councillor faulkner or councillor cook or councillor box wishes to speak next but in with the spirit of the constitution I think it would be more appropriate if we had somebody from the controlling group who would like to contribute to the debate next, please. 
Councillor Mr. Peoples, Mr. did you want I don't to... wish to speak, but could I just comment on that rule that you've mentioned? If it's a point of order... It is indeed a point of order to say thank you, Mr Mayor, because it was becoming blatantly obvious that the only gagging order was on the controlling group speaking before all of us had spoken. I thank you for your wisdom and justice, because I don't think there's a gagging order on the town centre. I disagree with that bit. Thank you, Councillor People. So, with that in mind, do we have anybody from the controlling group who wishes to go next? Okay. Councillor Brindley. Thank you, Mr Mayor, and good evening to those members of the public in attendance this evening. I'm not overly keen on the phrase, state of the borough. I'd argue it implies a negative perception rather than a positive one. And we have a lot to be very positive about here in Tamworth. <coughs> Tonight's full council should be one of absolute positivity, the potential of Tamworth, the visionary master plan into which the future High Street Fund will kickstart both strong economic regeneration and the shaping of a fabulous place to live and be proud to call home. And I have full confidence and belief in its capability for achieving exactly that. In fact, I'm very excited by the vision presented recently. I'm honoured to be part of a conservative group who are proactive, dynamic, ambitious and skilled in supporting these officers with the exact same vision and passion. Driving changes so desperately needed to improve the quality of life in every single aspect of all those we represent. We are primed and capable to create a new Tamworth, establishing an enviable example of how a vibrant town may be created and governed. Foundations will be laid strategically to ensure positive evolution for generations to come. For my speech as Heritage Champion last week, I used the analogy of Tamworth's spectacular story being a jigsaw. An amazing jigsaw in which we have never put the pieces together properly. That same analogy applies to the potential of Tamworth as a town. As a place of commerce, as a place of leisure, as a place of tourism, as a place that we can all be proud to live. Those pieces are now being put together properly. Future-proofing Tamworth is critical, and I have no doubt that the future High Street Fund's vision and our ambition will instill confidence in both the residents and businesses to invest emotionally and commercially in Tamworth, creating the right environment for social and economic growth and prosperity. The borough will prosper greatly from what this regeneration delivers. Leisure tourism and a high quality experiential offer that we develop will be a significant and primary catalyst and also the glue to all that has been discussed here tonight. For the public here tonight, I can tell you that as Heritage Champion, I've had many meetings with colleagues, key contributors, valued stakeholders and heritage partners. These meetings were met with absolute positivity, support, understanding and excitement that this time is now to ensure our history is the very foundation of our future. And their knowledge is succeeded and the town story does not die. The irony is that our future is so intrinsically linked to our past. We now need to do exactly that. And as Heritage Champion, I'll ensure that we put all that fantastic pieces of the Tamworth story together to create probably the greatest untold story. Not only locally, but nationally and internationally. A reimagined future-proof town centre which benefits from an, from an existing new leisure, tourism, retail events and housing offer. Seamlessly stitched together by our unique Tamworth story, aka our heritage. <coughs> and what a story it is. One I touched on last week in full council. To those I apologise, but one I will touch on again for those members of the public in the room. Individually, the list is amazing. Combined as our town as our Tamworth story, they are beyond spectacular. Certainly, in no particular order, the ancient capital of Mercia, Sir Robert Peel, Thomas Guy, Reliance, our wonderful castle, Colin Grazier, the Staffordshire Horde, Ethel Fleeder, and the fantastic Herald Archives. There's so much more, as everybody here tonight will know. King Ethelstan, now widely acknowledged as the first king of England, was taught the art of kingship here. Offers Palace, the wonder of the age, stood here in Tamworth. The Arches Railway Viaduct was built by the Stevensons, and I thank Councillor Cook for informing me, informing me last week that they were the first listed monument in the UK. 
King Henry the Seventh prayed at Tamworth Church. Gibbs and Canning used basket clay to create buildings such as the Albert Hall and many other great buildings abroad. How we do it is yet undecided. The need to do so is unanimous. Do we understand the problems? Yes, most certainly. The challenges we face are not unique to Tamworth. However, our, solu our solutions are and are being looked upon favourably by government. Have you heard this before? No, because this will be the biggest regeneration project the town has seen for many decades. Is getting this right now critical? Yes. That is why the What's Next initiative was so valuable in the process. To gain and time a is full... okay, so Oh, sorry, there was so much more to give. <laughs> <laughs> okay, looking across to the other side. Do we have anybody on the other side who wishes to go next? Councillor Fulton. Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. It's a great pity that we're restricted to uh, the town centre because realistically my understanding of the state of Tamworth today was things that affect Tamworth, not something simply to do with Tamworth Borough Council, not just a tiny little part, but the whole gamut of things that affect us. And therefore we're not restricted from, for example, uh, talking about the 800 houses being built in the floodplain, which I dare say we'll speak about in the future, but I think we're going to have problems with that. We're restricted about the shortage of NHS staff for the hospitals and GP practices that serve Tamworth. We're restricted from talking about the situation with the George Bryan Centre, which it looks as if it's not going to reopen at all. Instead of that, we have what uh, the leader of the council says these projects will come to fruition over the next few years. And it always seems to be, this is something fantastic, but it's going to be in the next few years. Here's something from the Tamworth Herald, and uh, we've heard mention of them already. September the 25th, 2008. At that time, the leader of the council was Councillor Jeremy Oates. New check. <coughs> By 2020, Tamworth will be an ideal place to live, says council leader. But the truth of the matter is, it was the jam tomorrow, and I've not noticed any significant improvements since then. I've seen a deterioration, in fact. The, the, the uh, Tory group are more concerned about demolishing things rather than constructing anything that's going to draw people into the town centre. Uh, now that we're here, that they missed, uh, uh, dodged a bullet when they were unable to construct uh, retail town centre. We on this side said what we need in the Gungate precinct is housing, particularly for elderly people who can use the facilities in the town centre and bring life and custom back into the town centre. Now there seems to be an attitude that this is the right thing to do. Perhaps they should have listened to us in the past. We heard that the proposal of £25 million um, would be the great, greatest thing in town centre ever since. So here we are again, Tamworth Herald from 2008, 75 million future for Gungay. But work won't start until 2010. Has it started? Not at all. We've got, um, the whole thing is just one disaster after another. And because they've relied on the private sector to miraculously, with the written hand, uh, produce these things, understandably it hasn't happened. And again, um, and for the right reasons, the council decided to buy that site so that we have some control over making things happen. But why wait until <coughs> then? We've been saying these things for a long, long time. Um, we see our police station <coughs> virtually empty. And it may actually be empty now. I noticed them removing the sign from outside the building today. Uh, our public toilets in the town centre have gone. I think we're one of the few country, few towns in the country that uh, does not have any public conveniences uh, within the town centre. Uh, quite frankly, um, when we talk in terms of what's happening, far from being a great and reforming 
and progressive council. It's been an absolute disaster, and the concentration has been a demolition. And the one fact in history which Council Princeton missed out, but which is probably more appropriate to the present Conservative administration, is the destruction in Tamworth in 943 AD by Olaf the Viking. Is that your ambition for this town? <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Paul. Councillor Michelle Cook. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I always enjoyed the evening of the State of the Borough Bur Bur debate, especially when we get the opportunity to discuss Tamworth, where it's been or where it's going. Yesterday, I was at a work meeting and someone stated a saying that their late grandfather used to say, every touch leaves a trace. And we started talking about Dr. Edmund Lockhart, which was someone I studied about in my first year of university. So on my way home, it was making me think about that, and specifically this council in tonight. For those of you who've never heard of Mr. Lockhart, or Dr. Lockhart, he was the French equivalent of Sherlock Holmes, a French criminologist who first came up with the exchange theory. Or the theory, every contact leaves a trace. For example, walking onto a crime scene, you'll leave a trace of your visit, such as your footprint on the ground. But likewise, the ground will leave a trace on you too, such as some mud or fibres on your shoe. As we sit here this evening talking about our town, every single one of us is leaving a trace, be that positive or negative, as those who have gone before us did and those who will follow in future. Whether it's a small contribution, such as coming to meetings such as this tonight, or if you're a member of the public, sharing your views by town with what's next, or visiting a local pub or shop or restaurant, or those who have fundamentally altered our towns, names such as Bill Dix with his roads and building spray, names of our former mayors in Bonhall who are registered on our roads, or more recently, the Paymore Lounge in the Assembly Rooms, named after the one and only Steve Paymore, who did so much to bring back our Assembly Rooms into the state we are so proud of, especially with the new lovely public toilets, which are available for anyone to use, I can assure you, after I did run into the car the other week. Outside of this council chamber, like the builders, who put so much time into creating the offer of businesses, some of which are in the audience tonight, who do so, without complaint at the hours they work or effort they make to ensure their business is a success or their customers are happy. Or those who volunteer, such as the night shelter, helping out the most vulnerable this winter. Or those who spend hours picking up litter that they didn't drop. Only kids do will tell. If we sitting here today and those residents alive today will be remembered in the same way as the likes of Robert Peel or Thomas Guy, or more recently, the Snow Dome, or the story of the escaping Crafty too, which really put us on the map. But this I do know. Tonight we sit here with so many opportunities to leave a positive trace on our town. Whether that be regeneration via the Future High Speeds Fund, or something else completely. Completing things like Gungate, or doing something different with our high-rise flats. Or ensuring we protect our heritage. Or a conversation that hasn't been mentioned yet tonight what to do about climate change. How do we, in our little town, fundamentally do our bit to reduce a bit, trace, to reduce the trace on our world? No matter what we do, however small, we all have the opportunity to make a difference. And that's my message to the people sitting in the audience tonight and the people in Tamworth, that we stand here today committed to make a difference and ensure that we leave our trace on the world for all of time, however big or small, and hopefully ensure that Tamworth continues to prosper long in the future. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cook. <coughs> Councillor Cook. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, whilst I am slightly um, uh, disappointed about it, which only being for the... Uh, uh, town area. Um, we're listening uh, to everybody else as well. For 
the tail to work, obviously we need the footfall. And the the projects we have in the lineup, which are actually really uh, impressive. So we have to uh, 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 continue on with that, and as I've already uh, said in for the past, uh, uh, the communication between us as uh, the public and everybody else is uh, key as well. But on that as well, we use all the areas which we've actually got for the uh, uh, homely rooms. Uh, finally finished, etc. Very, very nice in there. Events in there to watch the football. Uh, we have the uh, that for uh, barn events as well. Impressive. So let's have more events in the uh, in the castle there uh, for grounds as well. Extra football in the. Uh, Summer periods. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cook. Looking, uh, Councillor Jay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I agree with Councillors Norky, People, and Billcliffe that obviously there are other issues. Of course, there are, and we deal with them all, all year ourselves as councillors. They come up all the time, and we all deal with them. We all do. Um, we also believe it's sensible and reasonable to hone in on a key strategic theme so we can actually get a bit deeper into it, get more of our opinions out there, um, rather than going off on different tangents and different subjects. So I see no issue with that. Uh, Councillor Faulkner mentioned there have been no improvements and, in fact, deterioration across Tamworth. Um, so I think we must be living in different towns when you, when you say that. Um, we've got to mention a few of the top of the head here, improved train station, new pathways, refurbished assembly rooms, changing places, toilets in the castle grounds, amazing free events, new nature reserves, etc, etc. People come from across the county to visit Tamworth for a reason, and that's, in, that's increased over the years. So um, I agree more with Councillor Brindley that there's so much to actually be positive about. I haven't seen deterioration uh, in general. Obviously, there are things that come up agreed but in general I think the town has improved massively. Um, I seem to be agreeing with a lot of people this evening so I agree with Councillor Bill Kidd as well about involving opinions of people that don't use the town <coughs> centre. There's a reason for that um, and they should be involved and I hope they are indeed uh, involved in the process. Um, I'm probably one of those people. I occasionally use the town centre but uh, I disagree uh, with this point about parking and free parking being the issue. There are some towns that surround us um, that have free parking and their town centres are worse than Tamworth's. Um, I believe it's about the offer. If you ask me why I don't come as much as I probably used to years ago, uh, it's the offer. Um, you can go to Birmingham as an example, okay, it's a bigger city, but you might pay eight, nine, ten, twelve pounds of parking, you can go to a bar, restaurant, cinema, theatre, retail, offices, places for your kids to play, all in one place. So I personally believe it's about the offer. Um, now we as a group, and when I say a group, I mean controlling group, opposition, officers, residents, um, all of us must get the offer right, that it's bigger than any of us in here. Positively or negatively, this will impact the town for decades and decades to come, so I think let's stop faffing around about what the theme of a debate is or who said what 10 or 20 years ago. Um, let's get constructive uh, opinions out there, let's work together and get this right as a whole group. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Jay. 
Looking back to the opposition benches, do we have anybody to go next? Councillor People. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Apologies, Councillor Cook, but uh, I, I need you to leave at that moment. Um, and thank you for what you said. Uh, can I also um, say, Mr. Mayor, that uh, some of what I might have said tonight was uh, so expertly and articulately put by Councillor Shuri people that I shan't repeat it. Um, one difficulty of having her join the council was it just put me in the shade, but I, I do my best to cope. Um, the, uh, I'd also like to thank Councillor Michelle Cook for her kind comments about the snow dome. Um, as Chair of Ledger, greeting Princess Anne, bringing that project to fruition with the support of the con then Conservative Opposition and Conservative MP. It's nice to know I made a mark. At the time there were a few people who said it was more than a mark um, that we didn't want, but it's worked out. Um, what I would say to Councillor Jay regarding free parking is that if you ask the editor of the Herald, they'll tell you it's the biggest issue with Herald readers. Um, and whether they're right or not, they are nonetheless the, the issue that they keep coming back with. So uh, that is a point. It is a shame that we can't talk more widely, but I think what we can do tonight is pose some questions and challenges, which is what we've done and what I pledged to do while I was um, and the leader of the opposition. And that is to be constructive, but also to hold that point. So for example, when we did the budget, we praised those things that were right, and we praised those things uh, and criticised those things we weren't so sure of. Much has been made already of the, the bid. Um, question really whether the amount should have been mentioned. Um, but it is only a bid, and we will need to think very hard if the amount that we're awarded is not the amount that's been bid for, because it will then help to shape what we can do and what then we'll be left to think about what to do next. The report also mentions the market. Market tenders out at the moment. As I've said before, and I'm sure many of those in the audience will be aware, the market is not driving Tamworth at the moment. And simply being able to relet it doesn't do that. We've got to work very hard, I think, to look at what it is that will make our market drive a wider use of the town centre. At the moment, it's attracting a fairly narrow demographic. So we will need to work on that. In the report, it mentions the developing offer on the Gungate uh, development. It's good to know that everybody's still in the game, so to speak. The police haven't walked away yet. Um, but I think it is important to bear in mind that we do need the right mix in there because the difficulty, some of the plans that were there, as mentioned, for example, of, of a car park in the particular one, um, that, that's fine. If we get that balance right, we need some housing in there because we need some people living in the town centre. And others have mentioned, it's quite right, we've said it several times, um, and uh, it wasn't always listened to. But we can only hope for improved listening skills. Um, we are, as a town, facing a big challenge at the moment. I don't think we can talk about future-proofing the town. We can talk about doing our best. And one of the points I made last week, and since Councillor Brindy's made a few points of the same, I think I can get away with doing the same. Um, and I said this to, to Councillor Oates, it's been reinforced by this report. Every town is trying to find its heritage. Every town is trying to say, come to us because. And that's good, there's nothing wrong with that. But as the report says, our Heritage Action Zone bid did not succeed. The heritage alone won't make it work. We have to build that up. So one of the things we need to do, Mr. Mayor, is to make sure thank you. We is to make sure that we are focused on delivering things that will really make a difference in the town. It's got to do that, otherwise it isn't going to work. And we must challenge and look at hard. One of the things that's not been mentioned so far tonight is anchor side. Anchor side needs to be moved on. We had a somewhat complacent response the first time we mentioned it. Oh, they won't go bust. Mars is far too big a pension fund. Yes, but are they putting any money into it or are they letting it sit there? It's too big for us to let it sit there. So, Mr. Mayor, what I'm asking all 
especially those in the cabinet and those in the controlling group, is to listen to the well put points. You've heard them tonight. Councillor Cook was generous in his comments to Council Street people. I want to know that they will still be listened to because it's only together that we can make this work. Thank you, Councillor People. Looking back to the controlling group now for somebody. Oh, Councillor Ford. And it must be weird looking the other side. Thank you, Mr. No. It must be weird looking the other side. Uh, trying to find someone to speak and then me sitting on the front bench on the other side that must be incredibly weird it's incredibly weird for me too <laughs> what about us <laughs> I, 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 I don't even imagine how I'm the Labour front bench there's a good two space gap so I think we're fine you, you can join in time you can join in time you work into a shuffle this way <laughs> Get me an application form, I'll consider it. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Last Tuesday, I had the great privilege of being invited to give a speech uh, to members of the Tamworth Boy Brigade on the uh, subject of local politics and the role of being a councillor. Um, as I was too much of a car to go by myself, Councillor Oates came with me, um, mainly for his, because of his experience, um, and he's done other roles that I have not. Uh, we both had a thoroughly uh, enjoyable evening. Uh, what was supposed to be a swift half-hour chat turned into an hour-long two-way debate. I mean, for them it must have seemed like I was ranting at them for an hour, but I, t I like to call it a, a two-way debate covering a large variety of uh, subjects. Uh, this included the roles and responsibilities of a councillor, uh, the difference between the different levels of government, borough, county uh, and national, and what their responsibilities are, uh, and how to become a councillor, which Jeremy Oates afterwards kindly berated me for as I gave a 15-minute explanation to them. Uh, knowing there was a possibility that the boys would be in attendance tonight, I uh, turned the lower, second half of the conversation towards the town centre, and specifically what they would like to see in the future. What, was, what resulted was incredibly eye-opening. The boys told me that they uh, wanted unique shops, niche shops, things that they couldn't get in town with at the moment, that they have to travel further afield for. Uh, uh, they were talking talk about more leisure offers. They were mentioned inter, uh, inter uh, troop competitions. Uh, that they would use town electric facilities for if we offered them. Uh, and more restaurant and more places to hang out with their friends. This ultimately left me with one significant question which will form a recommendation later on for me. What consultation has been done with the younger generation regarding the future of our town centre? I have heard many times in my nearly four years on this council that a lot of young people leave town with the university and never return, uh, other than to visit family. I will concede that town will never match some of the university town cities across the United Kingdom in their, in their offer. There's just no way we can, but we can come close. Uh, whilst a modern environment town centre, fit for purpose in the 21st century, won't necessarily alleviate all the issues while people leave Tamworth. It might give them a reason to stay. We just need to listen to them and find out what they want. Uh, as Councillor Cook mentioned uh, whilst opening the debate, uh, the town centre does need to evolve. Uh, and I agree. Uh, 100% retail, retail uh, focus offer is no longer sustainable. As has been mentioned other times by other speakers tonight, a well-educated mix of housing, leisure, shopping, offices, and a vibrant nighttime economy uh, will help this town thrive in the future. Uh, I'm also glad that the other councillor, Councillor Michelle Cook, mentioned climate change. As this council will be aware, I hope members of the public are aware, we are coming to uh, committed to become uh, net zero by 2050. Although we might differ on the dates we want to see. Oh, it, it is one of the most paramount issues that we all agree on that we need to do. I do thank, uh, thank Chris, uh, Councillor Cook, although he didn't vote for his own amendment, for uh, submitting the, off, the other offer that we all, all agreed on. It needs to be at the forefront of any decisions we make in this future for this town. Uh, I will make the recommendation later on in the debate regarding uh, further consultation with younger people, but for now, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ford. Um, Councillor Box, you don't have to take part in the debate if you don't wish to, but it's now your right to go next if you so wish. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I thought we'd come to, uh, to debate the state of the borough, but we seem to have gone off the track talking about the future town redevelopment. Um, I think the two need splitting apart. And I agree with Councillor Nucky and Councillor Faulkner. We're forgetting the priorities around the table, potholes, 
poor housing, etc., etc. Um, we've got to <coughs> keep the two things separate. Future development, I think, we should talk about in a different uh, scenario to what we're talking about tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Box. Looking back to the controlling group now. No one? Oh, <laughs> Councillor Oates was first, then Councillor Pritchard, <laughs> then Councillor Chesler. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I thought I'd put my hand down quickly when Councillor Chesworth indicated that <laughs> clearly not quick enough, mate. No. Um, so, yes, State of the Borough debate, uh, focus on the town centre. And we've heard already this evening that people would like to discuss other issues. Uh, mention was made of the George Bryan Centre, NHS nurses, buildings, parcels, whatever else. Don't follow him, don't wait for him to call a debate. You have the right to a single issue debate. Let's do it. Let's get in this room more often and talk about the issues that concern us all and stop waiting for him. Uh, I don't ring down. <laughs> Sorry, I weren't going to wait for you. Um, Mr Mayor, I was name checked earlier uh, by a colleague who has been on the council as well, long as he was already here when I started uh, and so has a, has a good memory. However, on occasions, convenient memory loss drops in. We talked about closing toilets. December 2002, the council closed the spinning school lane toilets, which were only months old at the time. Yep. Award winning toilets, months old, closed. I remember it was 2002, December 2002, because it was 2003 that BBC Question Time came to the assembly rooms, as it was then. And I've got suspicion that was the first time I met Rob Pritchard in the toilets, but that's a different story. <laughs> Mr Mayor, the first State of the Borough debate <coughs> took place in 2001. At that State of the Borough debate, for Richard's benefit, I was sat, I think I was sat where Shereen, uh, sorry, Council people were sitting there, and asked Council Fortner the question, shouldn't you keep hold of the art centre? Should we be selling all the family silver? And the answer I got, which is quoted in the Herald, was, just because we've had these assets in the past, does not mean, mean we need to keep them in the future. So we've all been there, we've all done it, we've all tried. My quote from 2008, might be a bit of memory loss here, but I seem to remember, due to the banking crisis, the economy crashed. Nothing was being built. And we suffered for that at the time. So that's why that project that I was so excited about failed. It wasn't because we weren't trying. It was a private project. It wasn't because we could help. All the forces came in. So, Mr Mayor, the town centre, the feedback we've had. I stood here last year and said, we must do better. Twelve months on, Mr Mayor, we must do better. We've started. We've started a number of projects. We spoke about Future High Street Fund earlier and the bid that we've submitted. May have been opportunistic, but we went for it. We heard earlier about the heritage and the, the role of heritage champion that the Council of Brunley has. We have another heritage summit at the end of March. And we're talking about some exciting things there, about ta telling Tamil's story. But what we have to remember, Mr Mayor, is whilst we don't have the answers to all the questions, we also don't have the power or resource to answer all those questions. Many of them are beyond our control. I'm pleased that the point was raised about the market not driving the town centre. And I was pleased that that came after Councillor Stanley mentioned the potential impact of the coronavirus uh, and, and the, the scary news we see every day. Do you know, Amazon's biggest growth was during that recession period 2008, 9 and 10. The reason being, people weren't going out shopping, they were looking for cheap bargains. This potential risk we've got, you know, I've got a minute already. One minute, yeah. Jeez. Uh, this potential risk with coronavirus could have a massive impact on our town centre, and we have to be aware of that. So, Mr Mayor, I will wrap up very quickly. Councillor Brunley forgot Ernest Titterton, one of our famous inventors who helped end the Second World War. 
The point is, we have many parts of the jigsaw, and we need to get them all together. And we all need to work together across this whole chamber, in the public sector, the businesses, and the public of Tamworth. Uh, sorry, the private sector as well. All need to pull together to put this jigsaw together. Not one of us has all the answers. I know car parking was raised, Mr Mayor, and I'll just finish on a final point. Are you aware that next to our jewel in our crown, Tamworth Castle, we have a short-stay car park? Regardless of the price, you can only park there for two hours. There's lots of things we need to change with car parking, Mr Mayor. It's not just about pricing, it's about the whole offer. If we want people to visit the castle, we can't restrict them to two hours. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Rose. Councillor Pritchard. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I've been to 16 of these state of uh, toy debates, and I, I know that's surprising given my youthful complexion. Um, but, uh, I, I did have a bit more hair at my first one. Um, I seem to be starting to thin now. Uh, and many of them have been themed as tonight is themed on the town centre. But one thing that has happened in all of them is the town centre has always featured very heavily in pretty much every one of these debates we've had over the 16 years. It's a well-discussed issue. Indeed, last week's council meeting was again about the town centre. And I'm looking up as a patch member, along with my colleagues, to have a bit of the town centre in my ward. And it's an issue that stirs passion that people really, really care about. And um, if you take a common complaint about the town centre, we get one, for example, it's only full of card shops. Uh, and, and people don't like that. But we recently had the, noise, uh, the, the uh, news that one of the card shops was closing, and the people were complaining that one of the card shops was closing. Now, luckily, it was only temporary, but it demonstrates people's interest and passion and the divides that, that are around the town centre offer. Um, but like everybody else here and everybody else in the town, we, we want the town centre to grow and be successful. Uh, points have been made that the, the town is bigger than the town centre, uh, and I'm also sure that there are many residents who probably don't consider the town centre the centre of their town. It actually may be uh, a park, a nature reserve, some people, I'm sure, will consider it to be Ventura um, because it, it can be subjective. But for most, it's here where we are now. Most people will consider where we are now the town centre. And it's that passion that will actually serve the town centre well in the future because the town centre has been here for you know, more than a couple of hundred years and I'm pretty sure it will be here for at least another couple of hundred to come. If you take retail parks like Ventura, they're a relatively recent invention. It's been here for you know, nearly just short of 30 years. And I'm not sure anybody in this room could say it will be there in its current form in another 30 years as retail has changed. But I'm pretty sure town centres and Tamworth will survive retail parks, it will survive online shopping and it will survive COVID-19 because people care about our town centre. As long as we use the tools we have at our disposal as an authority, we can, we can make that happen. We can't control market forces. We can't build 20,000 square foot units in the town centre. You'll probably find the town centre could probably fit one 20,000 square foot unit, which is what modern retail wants. But we have that opportunity to deliver something new for the town centre. Um, there's one thing I'd love to see, and I'm sure Councillor Ford would agree, me, agree with me, which would be a nice hockey stadium. Um, but that's not, not going to happen in the town centre. Until recently, this authority was a very small player in the town centre. We were at best a minor landlord. But with Gungate and with the future high street funds, this has changed. The, the council has the opportunity and for once the capital to go out and do some real place shaping for the town centre. And we have the opportunity to make everybody happy. Well, maybe some people happy, maybe. But we'll do what we can because we have an emerging plan. We have a lot of opportunity to update the town centre for the current need and the future need. We can boost its footfall and we can make a town centre that appeals to everybody because, as has again been discussed tonight, there isn't necessarily that universal appeal. And these boosts we can do will be around the use bringing in commercial space, retail, leisure, culture and residential because all of these will contribute to a vibrant town centre. And we've also talked about heritage and the heritage offer and we can see what we do, what we can do when we put our minds to it, for example, with the redevelopment of the assembly rooms. There's one other thing we can do, though, which has been lacking with many speakers tonight, which is to talk up Tamworth. There is too much talking down Tamworth. If we get together and we drive our passion for the town, we can talk it up. And that's the message that needs to be taken away from tonight's debate. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Councillor Pritchard. Councillor Chesworth. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, 
Councillor Pritchard, I'm in danger of repeating Councillor Pritchard actually, uh, so I apologise for that. Um, we have the state of the poorer debate every year, and every year we pick on a topic or several topics to debate, and this year we've picked the town centre regeneration and evolution, which is probably the biggest single issue affecting the people of town at the moment. I accept that all councillors have issues in their own wards, and hopefully all councillors are dealing with those issues within their wards. Councillor Oates pointed out that we could have a single issue debate on some of those issues, if so desired. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed that there's been a lot of talk about uh, history uh, and issues from the past. Uh, I would hope uh, that we were talking about the future of the town centre. It is a massive, massive issue. Uh, the key word for me there is evolution. The town centre does have to evolve into something different. Um, we, I see a lot on, on social media about uh, wasn't the, the Tamworth of in the 1960s wonderful. I'm sure it was in the 1960s. Um, it was of its time and it was great, no doubt. I don't remember it personally, clearly. Um, uh, but we're not in the 1960s now, we're in 2020. Um, and the, the purpose of the town centre, or the, the, the reason for the town centre has to be something different. Uh, our retail centre now, uh, in terms of high street, big high street retailers is clearly Ventura Park. Uh, the big high street retailers won't come into our town centre. We don't have the type of units that will attract them. Uh, so they're not sufficient size. So we have to do something different with the town centre. Um, unusually, I found myself agreeing with councillors, people and people. Uh, we do need a, a fair mix in the town centre and we do need to include housing. Uh, and a mix of housing. I think that's very true. Uh, couldn't agree more. Uh, we also need to, to look at the, the independent retailers, um, places like, and I'll pick one off the top of my head, Tamworth Toolbox, fantastic independent retailer. If you want to buy a single screw, you can pop in there and buy a single screw. <laughs> um, we need more of those independent retailers. <laughs> we need more of those independent retailers. Um, we also need a better leisure offer and a nighttime, a better nighttime offer. However, I'm glad that with the opening of the assembly rooms, uh, that, that is hopefully the start of the nighttime offer improving, uh, and hopefully uh, the start of more people coming into the town at night. Uh, we keep going back to the car parking issue. Uh, and wouldn't free parking be marvellous or cheaper parking? Uh, council of people pointed out that Grace Church is £1.60 for two hours, uh, Ankerside is £2 for two hours. Couldn't agree more with that. However, if you go and park on one of the Tamworth for a council car park, it's £1.40 for two hours. Uh, so actually, get yeah, cheaper. Um, I also agree with the council of Simon people actually that the market, we should make more, more use of the market and more of the market to get people into the town um, and attract. Uh, people so that they, they come and visit the market, they go and have something to eat, uh, they take part in some sort of leisure activity that's, that's uh, in the town. This is a big, big opportunity for the future of Tamworth. Um, plans are going to evolve over the coming weeks and months. Um, and we need to make the most of it. But we mustn't make knee-jerk re reaction, uh, we mustn't make knee-jerk decisions. Um, if we do that, and we get it wrong, it'll cost Tamworth um, for a long, long time. So we've got to get it right, and it's got to take time um, to allow us to make the, the right decisions. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Chesworth. Do we have anybody else wish to take part in the debate this evening? No? Well, in that case, then, I'll hand over to Councillor Cook to sum up. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, first, I beg the room's forgiveness. While there were some positive comments in parts from the opposition, there was also some political digs, so I might have a few back. Obviously, it's been said from across the uh, other side of the chamber, we need to speak on one voice on other topics like paths, trees, roads. But apparently I've gagged this chamber by asking for this debate to be about the town centre. I remember about a year ago, Mr Mayor, I fetched a vision statement and a list of priorities that covered everything in this town and the town centre was only one of those priorities. The opposition voted against those priorities, Mr Mayor. They clearly don't care that much. I would say a lot has been said tonight, Mr Mayor, and I am reminded of something that happened, and it seems to be the theme of the night, in 2008. 
this council had actually appointed, very briefly, a, an image consultant. And that's not for this council, it was for the town. And it was about looking at how we can improve the image of Tamworth as a brand. And this particular guy had done wonders with the places of Burnley and Rotherham to improve their image in their region. And it was only a small amount of money, it was only for a couple of days to come and look at that, and what we could do as a council to improve the image of Tamworth. The guy got off at Tamworth train station, got in a taxi, said to the taxi driver, what do you think of Tamworth? And after several expletives, climbed out of the taxi here at the council building and said, I know why you need me. Now the reason I raised that, Mr Mayor, is he was spot on. As Councillor Pritchard has correctly said, when we talk down Tamworth, people hear it. When we talk up Tamworth, people hear it. Let's talk it up more. That is not to ignore the issues. That is not to pretend it's a utopia, but let's stop running it down. We need to be collectively ambassadors for our town, get the visitor numbers up. <coughs> if I was to tell you, Mr Mayor, that in 2018, over £90 million was generated for the Tamworth economy in tourism. That's a phenomenal amount of money. It's not enough. I want more. I want this chamber to want more. I want the residents of Tamworth to want more. We can do so much better if we pull together. Now, it's been said that I've shackled this chamber by making this single issue. Actually, if members actually read the Constitution, the state of the borough debate is entirely at the request of the leader to decide what is debated. And that has been the case since it was first created under Labour control of this council. I chose this year the town centre because it's a big issue for a lot of people and a big topic for this council currently. And rather than every individual one of us, all 30 of us, stand up with a scattergun approach to talk about trees or paths or roads, and that's not to say those things are not important, we would never get anywhere. Forgive me, Mr Mayor, for trying to give this chamber some focus and in the hope some members could be a little bit more strategic. Mm -hmm. Clearly I failed in my thinking. I would honestly say, Mr Mayor, Councillor Oates stole my thunder when he mentioned single issue debates. Anybody has the right to fetch something into this chamber for a full debate of all members should they wish. Those powers have not been used by the opposition, ever. I am reminded, Mr Mayor, of why I did Tamworth What's Next. One of the problems the town centre has had, probably since the 1960s when the Labour Party started knocking it to bits, sorry Councillor Ford, you said we destroyed it, uh, basically, one of the things the town centre's never had is a politician in town to stand up above the parapet and say, I've got this. I'm prepared to say, I've got this. I stood up, front of Tamworth, what's next, and said to the people of Tamworth, tell me what you want to see, and we'll see what we can do. When then I hear we're not talking to the public, I feel a little bit upset about that. We have listened to the public. We gave them an opportunity of their voice, and we've heard what they've got to say. It's now our collective job to deliver on that to ensure we give the residents of Tamworth the town centre they deserve. As I said, the beating heart of Tamworth. There's a long way to go, Mr Mayor, but the building blocks are there. We can start building what <coughs> needs to happen long term to make our town centre something phenomenal that people wish to visit. And it is about more housing, it is about more leisure, it is about more culture, it is about embracing our heritage. Our 2008, there's that year again, Master plan for the town centre actually said town centre housing. Yet I hear thrown across the chamber tonight, we've never discussed that as a controlling group. Yet it was in our master plan in 2008. Again, thank you to the banking collapse, a lot of that fell apart. It was not this council or this controlling group that fault that you know, subprime mortgages collapsed in the United States, taking down the banking system. Mr Mayor, I'll say it again, we have an opportunity. I want to focus this council on this opportunity as much as can, not to push other issues aside, but to grab this opportunity that's right there, right now, for the residents of Tamworth. With that in mind, Mr Mayor, and I am open to other recommendations this evening to be voted on, I was going to move a recommendation that we create a cross-party working group that will guide the future of the town centre. However, I'm pausing on that currently, given that clearly the town centre wasn't important enough to actually focus on this evening. I will take it under advisement with my cabinet and I will confirm next week whether it is my intention to continue down that line or not. But I welcome any other recommendations, Mr Mayor, and thank you for your indulgence. Thank you, Councillor. Um, <coughs> Councillor Peoples, is this a recommendation? Uh, no, actually, uh, Mr Mayor, if I may, it's three points of information. With your permission. Go for it. 
The first point of information is having checked the constitution last night, I think Councillor Cook is slightly at fault in his recollection. My recollection of the constitution is that the topic for discussion at the State of Tamworth debate is agreed between the leader and the mayor. It's only a small point, but I think it's an important point. The second point of information... Um, Just I for clarity on that point, you are correct. It is for discussion and decision between the leader and the mayor. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I just say I'm not surprised to find that Council Mrs. Peoples right. <laughs> Apologies, Mr. Mayor, for that intervention. <laughs> just <laughs> sounds like a science fiction film. Um, just for clarification, okay. The Constitution states under Rule 4.15.2 that the leader will decide the form of the debate with the aim of enabling the widest possible public involvement and it goes on. So the form of the debate is decided by the leader and then it mentions with the, with the, agreement, of the, with the agreement of the mayor. Thank you for that clarification, Mr. Mayor. Um, my second point of information, and, and it's actually a question to the leader, um, he seemed to suggest that the members on this side of the chamber had voted against at the State of Tamworth debate last year. Was that what you intended, or were you referring to some other debate? No, Do you want to respond, Councillor Cook? At the State of the Borough debate last year, Mr. Mayor, when the uh, corporate priorities were discussed, they were not voted on at the State of the Borough debate. The corporate priorities formed part of the budget last year, which the opposition group voted against. So my statement that you voted against the corporate priorities is quite correct. Okay, next point, Councillor Peter. Thank you for that clarification, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. I think that, sorry. I think that's all, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we then move to um, anybody else wish to move any motions? Councillor Ford. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I did not think there'd been sufficient uh, consultation with younger people uh, of Tamworth, uh, so therefore I'd like to move the recommendation that Tamworth Borough Council uh, undertake some form of consultation with secondary schools within Tamworth to understand what these younger generations uh, want to see from the future of their town centre. Uh, look for a second. I'm um, just jotting this down. Um, just bear with me. I've got a written copy if you like it. Okay, yeah, that would be absolutely wonderful. Do we have a second up for that? Councillor Chris Cook. So we have that recommendation. Councillor People. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have two recommendations, if I may. One is um, I'm disappointed to hear what the leader said about the cross party working group, given that um, a member of the cabinet categorically agreed that that would take place at a debate last week. And I would like to recommend that a cross party working group on the future of the town centre is set up. I think members on all sides of the chamber have a lot to contribute. Um, and I think that um, it would be disappointing and petty if the leader were to exclude members on this side just on the basis that we occasionally might criticise um, actions taken by the other side. That's my first recommendation. Yeah, I get that. That's your first one. Let's just deal with that first one. Do we have a second for that first one? Okay, Councillor um, Bill Cliff was first to second that. Could I ask that you just jot that down so we've got that as a written record? Just on a bit of paper will be absolutely fine. Your second recommendation. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. This relates to my comments earlier about the quality of the information in the feedback. Um, I, obviously, there wasn't scope for asking questions this evening, but I would like more information on exactly who responded to the feedback, who they were, what their age profile was, were they young people, old people. If we don't have that information, then I would like to make a recommendation that we take further steps to find, um, find out from as broad a range of Tamworth residents as possible exactly what it is that they would like. I applaud Councillor Ford's 
recommendation about seeking the input of younger people, but actually we've got a very wide range of people in the borough, so we want to hear from young, from older, from, um, from rich, from poor, from people who live in Bowl Hall and Spittle and all around the town. Um, so I'd like to see, if possible, either information on the demographics of those who responded or further efforts made which might be in the form of perhaps taking surveys, actually going out to find people, knocking on doors, um, something proactive. Thank you. Thank you, Ken Spiegel. I'm sure, and I'm just going to look across, is, uh, is that demographic information readily available? before we take this as a proposal. Councillor uh, Oates. Uh, yeah, Mr Mayor, if I might just respond to that one. Uh, we've got a lot of time and effort into making sure we covered as many bases as, as possible. Uh, we did, did collect data as to the people that attended the events. Uh, we had a number of focus groups which were open to the public. We had a separate one which was open to businesses. We had another one which was open to community, community groups and community leaders, as it were. Uh, Unfortunately, due to the timing in the summer, we didn't have the school's uh, focus group didn't actually take place, and that was because of the, the school holidays. So we have got a lot of that data that, that you require, uh, and, and a lot of that, that information. So I can, I can make sure we, we pull that out for you. Thank you. In light of that, Council people, do you wish to withdraw that recommendation? Yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. If I could have that information, I'd very much appreciate it. I'm happy to withdraw the recommendation. Thank you. So we have two recommend... Uh, three... Mr Mayor, could I ask that we have that information passed to all councils? We can ask. Yep, I've just received a nod from uh, Councillor Oates. So we have two recommendations at the moment. Do we have any more? No. With that in mind then, we'll move to a vote on the first recommendation, which was put forward by Councillor Ford, seconded by Councillor Cook, and that is uh, that Tamworth Borough Council consults with secondary schools in focus groups to input into what they see they need with regards to the Borough of Tamworth. I'm sure I can word that, we can word that a little bit better, but that's the essence of the proposal. Yes, yeah. Is that, are we happy with that as the essence of the proposal, with my gobbledygook English being better worded by far greater people? Is that a question? It's, it's a question to me. Yeah, yeah. Or a point of order with regards to me, yeah? It's, 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 sorry, it's, it's a good question. When, when you say schools, does that include all schools which serve the... We will feed Tamworth, yes, yeah, so St Francis. Yeah, and St Francis, which has a significant number of uh, Tamworth pupils. Council of People. I, I really do applaud um, taking focus groups from pupils at secondary schools, but why stop there? Mm. Pupils at primary schools have opinions on what ought to be happening in the town centre as well. Before we look at that as an amendment, would you like to reword Councillor Ford, or are you going to stick with as it, as it is? Uh, Mr Mayor, I think uh, secondary school should be a priority. Uh, we should give the option to primary school, so if we could remove the word secondary from uh, the motion, uh, I'll be very happy to uh, agree to the amendment. Thank you. That just saves us going to yeah. putting an amendment forwards. Councillor Cook, I'm just looking forward to you as you seconded that. In light of that slight change to the wording, are you happy with that, Councillor? Councillor People. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. I'm just conscious that if we interpret schools literally, um, we have a college. Um, so can I just ask that it, it does include <laughs> its education? <laughs> now, the, the simple point being, Mr. Mayor, that one of the groups that are generally not looked to are those over the age of 16 who are not in school, can't have a set lesson set aside for civics where they discuss the council's ideas. So I'm just asking that it includes them as well, because it'd be good to do that. And my other comment would be, Mr Mayor, I'm delighted that we are able to have these stats. One thing that I took out of Councillor Oates's response to Councillor and Mrs People was that the groups had opted in. So there were sessions open to those who wanted to come. I will just ask that we look carefully at the data to make sure that we haven't missed 
yeah. perhaps the 30 to 45 year olds who form the core of the spending in the town because they're the least likely to opt in, if you see what I mean. Those with time, older people, you might say like me, um, will have the time to opt in, and I'm just asking that. But if, it, as long as it's interpreted by the, I don't okay. like the word. In an itself. effort to draw this element to a satisfactory conclusion, we've just drafted something here. The Tamworth Board of Council consults with younger people, uh, in brackets, school, college age, with regards to the town centre and other areas. Are we happy with that? Council of Ford, as it's your proposal, I'm going to you first. Thank you very much. If we could add uh, youth community groups as well, it would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> yes. Okay, so it's getting a bit like, what have the Romans done for us? The, the Romans, the Bible. Okay, Council of Cook. Um, Sorry, Mr. Mayor, you've not included my mother yet. <laughs> no, you know, this is great. No, no, but actually, Mr. Mayor, however the recommendation is phrased, and I hope it's voted on, how about I uh, give a promise to this chamber that the principle of what is being asked will be stuck to and we'll get to every bit we can of what has been said. So rather than keep adding and taking away, <coughs> let's, let's get the recommendation through, yep. but the principle will be followed. Okay, let's move to the vote then. All those in favour? That's carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to the next proposal, which was the cross-party working group proposal put forward by Councillor People and seconded by Councillor Billcliffe. Are we happy with that? I'm just looking forward to those that have proposed it. Okay, so, all those in favour? All those against? And we have some abstentions which are noted. Okay, that didn't carry. That was a big sigh. Ladies and gentlemen, councillors, thank you for your attention this evening. It's been an interesting debate and we've covered lots of topics. And we have one proposal going forwards and a promise of information to be shared amongst councillors. I look forward to seeing you again on the 17th of March, those of you that can make it in the Town Hall. And with that, I now close the State of Tamworth debate. Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the worshipful the Mayor of Tamworth, Councillor Richard Kingstone.